All right, welcome guys. Today's journey brought us down to this little thing right here. It is the giant three-headed elephant, or it's the Erewhon Museum. So we're gonna go in and we're gonna check it out. So let me show you around. So tickets for the museum for foreigners is 400 baht, which is $12, or it's 250 baht for a Thai. Looks pretty quiet today, but we're gonna go walk around and see. But there is the Erewhon Museum. So here is the gigantic elephant, and it is colossal. Now around the museum itself is like a Buddhist walk. So you can walk through, they have some chetties and some shrines. They have like a whole little walk that you can do and make merit out around the base of the museum. All right, so this Erewhon Museum is located in Samat Prakan, which is a suburb of Bangkok. And it's really, really easy to get to. They've extended the Sukhumvit BTS line. So you can take the Sukhumvit BTS line to Erewhon Station. And there's another one just a little bit off to the, uh, I guess it's off to the west. And it's like Salon Pu or something like that, but it's a little bit further away. But the easiest way is the BTS right to the Erewhon BTS station. And So the structure itself is about 250 tons and it's about 29 meters in height and 39 meters in length. Now the museum itself inside is divided into three levels. It has the underworld, which is down below, the human, the human earth, and heaven, which is up on the top. So let's go inside and let's look at the underworld. Now, as always, when you come to some place like this, is dress correctly. And they show you here, no tank tops and short skirts. Make sure you wear polite clothing. And if you don't, you can get a shawl and a sarong here. This gives you kind of a rough idea of the construction of this. So in 1994, they laid down the foundation of the Erewhon Museum. Here they're preparing a wax model in 94 and then they started the construction of the, the base and the legs and they did that out of concrete and so here's the torso of the elephant that was started in 1995 a year after they started building it and 96 they started joining the structure of the head with the torso 96 also the head of the the copper head of the Air One elephant 97 they started doing the decoration work on the outside and then it was finally completed in 2003 so in the museum here they have a lot of little chinese pottery In like the Lotbury style, where they got the pottery at. So let's go up into the middle part or the earth portion of the museum. This is really, really nice. So we have some stairwells that go up there. And the roof. Let's 
stained glass is really cool. Now to the ties, the elephant is very lucky. It'll bring good fortune. So that is the significance of the elephant here as far as being the... Uh, so in the earth, or the middle section, all around the spiral staircase that goes up, it has just a lot of detail work on all the, the main support columns. There's the marble floor. Really, really nice. See here, they have all the stuff for the Buddhism. With these like little chicken creatures and the Naga and like the half monkey people. So this pillar right here is what they call the Christian pillar. It has various scenes from the Bible. This pillar here is the Mahayana pillar. It talks about the goddess Guan Yin. It has eight, eight levels to it. And this pillar, this pillar here is the Brahma Hindu pillar. So it'll have all the Hindu scenes etched into it. Vishnu and all the other Hindu gods. And this one is the Theravada pillar. Freedom from samsara, from, it's gained from wisdom and perseverance. So it has all the scenes etched in it also. So we're going to go up the stairs to the heaven level. Looking down. So they have an elevator up here that you can use to go up to the top or you can take the little spiral staircase. Looking back in, so there's the ceiling and you can see the tops of the four pillars. Up here at the eighth level see they have it all inlaid all right so let's keep, keep going up the little stairwell all right so the spiral staircase actually is quite a little bit of a hike they have a little landing over here and you can see out of the window of the top of the elephant. You can look down at the people and the city. And this is where the elevator will bring you up. Got a lady in here mopping, floor's all wet. So we're in heaven. So here's the 
main altar, and then all around it they have some really, really old Buddhas. They have some that are from the 6th century made out of sandstone, one that's like the 8th century made out of wood, some bronze, really, really interesting. They have the crown Buddha images from Ayutthaya or the Lana Kingdom, and they have some from the Lopari. This is really, really nice. first stop that you come to is right here. This is Indra on the Arawan elephant. So everybody comes here and makes some merit. You can pray and you can shake the little sticks. But this here is supposed to give you the power of Indra. And it will give good people the means to fight against bad. So that's always a good thing. Alright, so let's walk around the museum. They have a garden walk or a pilgrimage road that you can do. Part of it is floating the little lotus flower. Now this comes from being from India. They believe the earth came into being just like a stem of the lotus flower emerging from the flower or the pond. The act of floating the lotus flower is like the like symbol of plentifulness and abundance. So you can float the little lotus flower just like this and let it go. Alright, so all around the museum are these big elephants. Now, you're supposed to cross underneath the elephants. Now, to the Thai people, elephants are really a lucky animal and they're gigantic so it's kind of believed no it didn't even makes a little noise it's kind of believed that if you're uh, brave enough to cross underneath the elephant's belly that you're going to be the lucky one and you're not going to face any more hardships in your life you won't have any more troubles if you i guess if you don't get steps on you won't have any more troubles right okay in this part of the little pilgrimage walk is the Praket Chulamin Chedi or Jedi. Now it's in honor of one of the Brahma gods. But it has a lot of the Thai deities down here on the bottom also. It's supposed to bring joy to the worshippers. So if you come here on your birthday, that's when you're supposed to come to this one and worship at this Jedi. All right, so right here around the pilgrimage walk, they have a Hindu statue of Brahma. Now, Brahma is the most powerful god to the Hindu, and he's four-headed and four-armed. Now, in his hands, he's supposed to have like a holy book and a chain and a water kettle and a spoon, I guess is what that is. So if you come here to this one, you're supposed to ask for success in work and life. That's what the Hindu god of Brahma will help you achieve. And here are the Vishnu Pong elephants. It's supposed to bring wealth, I guess, if you come here and are lucky enough to see these. And part of the, the garden around the pilgrimage walk. Big Naga. Goldfish in here. Really nice. And the base of the museum. We did all the detail work around the windows. the elephants. Alright, so here is the Trimur tree shine, shrine, or however you say it. Now this little deity here is a combination of three gods. Shiva, Vishnu, and Brahma. So it's, it, the statue has got five hands, or I'm sorry, five heads, 
got the top head, and it's got six hands. So if you come here, this is supposed to bring you health and prosperity. These are the Chevra Pong elephants. And you can walk under these also if you want. So if you're a worship here, you're supposed to be blessed with health, powers, and work advancement. Okay, so here's a Ganesh. Now the Ganesh has got an elephant head and a human body. He was born from Shiva and Umchaya. He has four hands and is the god of obstacles. So if you come here and make merit, he will rid you Rid, rid the good people of obstacles and is the god of fine arts. Now, I've made a couple videos of some Ganesh, like a Ganesh temple that has Brahma and a couple others. And then I went to a giant, a huge Ganesh that was out in the middle of nowhere. I made a couple videos, of, so if you want to see those, you can check out my channel. But here we are back to the main museum. Okay, so the last little stop on the pilgrimage tour is Kuan Yin. It has another name, but I don't know what it is in Thai. It's a big old long one. But this is like a Chinese god. And they have a couple little things dedicated to some of the former Thai kings. So Rama 9, and then over there is Rama 5, with the nice inlay, the mother of pearl inlay in the, in the wood, really nice. But this Chinese goddess is, you come here and make merit to her, and it's supposed to bring you blessings and health, and she's to ward off illness. All right, guys, so that finishes up our little tour of the Erewhon Museum. Really cool. And it's a little pricey for what you get, but you know, the best part is the very top where you're up in the heaven area, and you get to see the really, really old Buddhas. You know, just kind of interesting to see a Buddha that's uh, made out of wood that's, you know, a thousand thousand two hundred years old that survived this long but anyway if uh if you like the video make sure you click like and if you're not subscribed to my channel now subscribe and share it with your friends and if you've been here or if you like the video leave me a comment tell me what you think about it or if you want to see something else let me know also and as always guys remember life is a journey so enjoy